On Connected Farmer today, we have the pleasure to have Steve Groff back to our program. He is a top expert on cover crops. Everybody is eager to see and hear what he's saying. And uh, today we are going to do a strong focus on his book, The Future Proof Farm. Steve, how are you today? Doing fine. Uh, pleasure to be on uh, your show again. Yeah, I I had the opportunity to do, to take a glance at uh, his book, and it's, it's really interesting. But I think uh, we are going to start by the top question that every farmer would uh, make. Steve, uh, I think uh, some farmers would be would be asking, what exactly is cover crops? Uh, is it for every farmer? How it affects uh, your productivity, or how efficient uh, your farm could be with cover crops? Yeah, so uh, cover crops definitely are now well known. Uh, over the last 10 or 20 years, there's been a lot of uh, talk about in the farm magazines and in meetings you go to. And, but I've been doing it for uh, very intentionally for over 25 years. So I totally uh, am immersed in it myself. And it wasn't until I saw for myself on my own farm what cover crops did to my soil. And I did some research. And it was four years into that research that we had a drought, a very dry year. And uh, I got 28 bushels per acre more of corn where I had planted cover crops four years previously. And ever since that, I don't ask the question anymore, do cover crops pay? I'm trying to make them as effective as possible. And then I've been educating other farmers on that. So I really believe that, uh, Almost every farmer could benefit from cover crops. Um, I probably should say every farmer, but you got to have the right mindset if you're going to do it. So everyone who has the right mindset, the right understanding, the willingness to embrace another level of management, they will find benefits in using cover crops. And um, and in a way, that's kind of a big part of my new book that's coming out soon, The Future Proof Fund. So, and, uh, so cash crops can also be cover crops. Explain a little bit more about that. Well, a cover crop, by definition, is usually strategically uh, planned to be in the soil, growing in the soil between the cash crops. Now, for instance, we can use a, a cover crop like wheat, for example, is traditionally used as a cash crop. It can be used as a cover crop, meaning we don't intend to harvest it. Um, I will say in that example that there are some better cover crops than wheat in that category. Cereal rye is a good example of that, where that is better uh, better rooting um, and deeper rooting and more roots than, than wheat is. So a cover crop by definition is between the cash crop. Now I would say that if you're very strategic about using cover crops, you don't want to use the same species that you're using for your cash crops because you want to have that rotational effect. So you want to be looking for another species, even if it's just a little bit different. Um, and then, then your cash crop. So ideally, if you're a wheat farmer, you wouldn't want to use wheat as a cover crop. So that's just a quick example there of how you manage that. Um, sometimes people say, well, wheat is very cheap. I can grow it myself. And I will say, well, I don't, I, I, I understand where you're coming from, but wheat doesn't have the roots that we want in a cover crop that cereal rye does. 
So even though it may be cheaper, it may not be doing as much for your soil. Again, we are speaking with Steve Groff, the author of the book, The Future Proof Farm. You are seeing the options on your screen to buy the book. And one of the issues that Steve uh, explains on the book, it's about the soil health and no-till. No-till alone can save your soil? Well, uh, I started no-till in the 1980s. And uh, after I was doing it for about 10 years, I asked the question, do I need to use cover crops if I'm no-till? And I honestly didn't know the answer to that. Uh, so that's when I started doing research with cover crops. And like I previously said, uh, I saw the benefits of cover crops. So now I will say is you cannot do no-till without the use of cover crops because if they work together. It's like one plus one equals three. There's a synergy there. And then we add another component in regenerative agriculture is diversity. To add diversity into your cropping system. Now that can be very easily done with cover crops. And then if you have the opportunity to add animals into your uh, system is even better yet. I understand it might be difficult for some, but that is the best if you can add that no-till cover crops, diversity, animals, uh, no disturbance of the soil, all those things is, uh, is the things that I try to promote. And how hard is the beginning of all of those practices? Well, it's a whole lot easier now than it used to be when I started. <laughs> we have so much information out there, so much equipment. I had to make my own equipment. I had to make some of my own attachments. I had to make my own row cleaners back in the early 1980s. Now there's so many row cleaners in the market, you can't decide which one to buy. Uh, so it's much easier today, but I'll tell you, it is complex. You do need to be a student of the practice of no-till, of using cover crops. You don't just buy a bag of cover crop seed and instantly become a cover crop farmer. There's a lot of management. Um, the profit in cover cropping is in how you manage it. And that's what I think a lot of farmers don't understand. They hear all these good stories uh, and all these great farmers talking about how all the cover crops are so good and they're true, but a lot of times they don't understand how that farmer made it work. All the details day to day and how they made it work. So cover cropping is complex, uh, but if you understand it, study it, start trying, talk to your neighbors who are doing it, you will become successful. Yeah, so we are speaking with Steve Groff. Uh, if we want to do a question, if you have a question for him, uh, please uh, comment, uh, please uh, send us the questions, and we'll do a lot of programs with uh, Steve Groff. Steve, uh, yes. another very interesting thing is about uh, hemp as an option for cover crops. Tell, tell us a little bit about that. So um, there's a couple different things. Um, we have one, uh, hemp species called sun hemp, Cordillaria juncia, which is used as a cover crop. Um, it's found primarily in the country of India, but it's been used all around the world as a summer cover crop. So um, that is uh, uh, one part of the hemp family. And we also, we've heard of cannabis and CBD hemp. Uh, I'm actually growing some of that as a cash crop it's good for the rotation, uh, so that is more of a cash crop. So we have hemp as the cover crop, which is a legume, uh, produces beautiful yellow flowers when they, when they bloom, and then uh, hemp is also uh, a cash crop that is very good for the soil, I might add, that we, uh, we use for uh, CBD oil production. Uh, yeah, so you also use that as a cash crop? Yes, I do. Yeah. Yes, and Steve, uh, and 
when uh, you do all of these uh, good practices for the environment and the soil, uh, do you receive better payments? So part of my book explains that um, the answer is maybe. Uh, sometimes yes. Uh, sometimes it's I was able to get a good market because of the environmental practices that I use on my farm. So it's not really counted as a premium, a premium price, but the markets that I sell to, some of my vegetables, they pay me a very fair price, a very good price, and uh, because they like what I do, they like the way I grow the produce that I sell to them. So, um, you know, that's my explanation. And um, it's also, again, a big part of my book is that the consumers want to know how their food was grown. So um, I'm rewarded because of that, because I have better markets that buy my produce because they want to market, they want to sell the environmental aspect of how I grow that food that the consumer is eating. And what do you do? Do you go to the local farmer market? So I don't go to local farmers markets. I sell primarily to stores and also <clears throat> to some food distribution companies that distribute to restaurants. So it's, uh, that's the main uh, two channels that I use, uh, stores and also restaurants. Okay. Is there something else would you like to add, Steve? Well, I think every farmer needs to reflect, to pause, to think about where the future is going. And again, that's part of why I wrote the book, to give farmers a insight into the future. I'm a vegetable farmer, which I'm more on the front lines of where I see this going, but even for corn and for soybean farmers, I'm seeing major companies that buy corn and soybeans are now asking these same questions. How is the corn grown? How are the soybeans grown? Are they grown in an environmentally friendly manner? Uh, because they want to answer to their customers that they eventually sell your products to. So my advice is to learn to do cover crops, learn to do no-till, get more diversity into your farm, and you will be rewarded uh, by that in the future. Steve Groff, thank you. You're welcome. Pleasure to be with you again.